Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. If you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, just two seconds. It helps the YouTube algorithms. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so as well. Hit the bell notification right next to it. If you're watching on Facebook, thank you very much. If you find this information valuable, please share with a friend. Hit the like button down below. If you have any questions or comments, I appreciate leave them leave them down below and I usually do answer them in a timely manner. Enjoy the video. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. I'm not going to tell you anything new about sugar and how addicting it is. Sugar... Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. In the short video, I'm going to tell you something that you don't know... That Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. In the short video, I'm going to tell you something that you do not know already. And that sugar is very addicting. I used to be a sugar addict back in the days. I took in a lot of uh, ice cream, bomb pops, snow cones, sugar cereal, ho-hos, everything. Sugar, was, sugar is addicting, okay? I was, had brain fog. I gained a lot of weight. I had stomach problems. Until I kicked my sugar habit, and I learned a little thing about nutrition. So I want to talk about how sugar affects the brain and the body. Okay? So one thing is, is that sugar is very addicting. The number one thing about sugar is that it causes systemic inflammation. It ages your skin. It causes heart problems. One of the things that sugar does, starting with the body, it causes inflammation. Now, Inflammation is normal. You work out, you exercise, you're stressed out, you do things. The body respond, naturally responds to inflammation. Inflammation is actually good for you because it tells the body that something's wrong to help repair it. However, what happens is that when you have sugar, too much sugar, it causes too much inflammation to the body due to release of what's called pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now, cytokines are the alarm signal you have pro-inflammatory cytokines and you have the anti-inflammatory cytokines. It's the balance system to say, okay, we're in trouble, we're not in trouble. What happens with sugar, it just puts that all over on that one side so you're in this chronic state of inflammation, which is not good, okay? Because it releases what's called C-reactive protein. When you release C-reactive protein in the blood, that just causes systemic inflammation for hours. So if you are taking blood labs, and you had a big sugar meal the night before, yes, the, the C-reactive protein is going to skyrocket because that's the main indicator of some type of inflammation. It's an inflammatory marker. So the thing is, though, when you have chronic inflammation, when you have too much sugar, okay, when you have that too much sugar all the time, chronic inflammation due to sugar may increase symptoms of other diseases. Rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's, celiac disease, uh, insulin resistance, diabetes, because why? When you have other diseases, your body is in a state of inflammation, and then when you're taking in all the sugar, that just puts that fire higher. So one of the ways to calm down any, any other auto, autoimmune diseases, if you have them, is watch the sugar intake. That's what I always tell my patients. Also, skin. It ages your skin. Because sugar is attached to proteins in the bloodstream. And it forms what it's called advanced glycation end products. AGEs are formed. Now, we do have these proteins that fluctuate throughout the body naturally. Our bodies are full of essential fats and proteins. However, when you throw a carbohydrate in there, when you throw a sugar in there, it ignites it and it makes it not good for your body. It ages the skin and also, too, it ages the brain. Thing is, it causes damage, these AGEs causes damage to the elastin and collagen. Now, our two main proteins that we have in our body are elastin and collagen, and keratin, which is the protein on the skin. However, collagen, that's the building blocks. That's the building blocks of your body, hair, skin, nails, everything. And when you have those advanced glycation end products, okay, it causes damage to the elastin and glycogen, I'm sorry, collagen, which creates more wrinkles and aged skin. You could, I could always tell how the person's diet is by looking at their skin. There's two things you can always tell. 
because the skin is due to the diet, but also to the, the liver, if they have poor liver health as well. Okay? Also heart health. Now, here's the thing about sugar and heart health. A lot of times the practitioners will say, well, cholesterol is high, so this is why we need to get you on a cholesterol medication. No, let's back down a little bit because sugar causes systemic inflammation to the arterioles, the endothelial lining of the arterial walls, which then signals C-reactive protein inflammation and when you have plaque buildup on the arterial walls, it loses the elasticity due to sugar. So this will cause, this will create the susceptibility of heart attacks, strokes, heart disease. It's not the cholesterol, it's the sugar. If you clean up your sugar, you're gonna decrease that systemic inflammation in the arterial walls, and you're going to increase the vascularity of the blood. You're going to feel better. That's the body part. Let's talk about the brain part. Now, the brain, okay, sugar is very addictive. We all know that, okay? It doesn't take a genius to understand that sugar is very addictive. Why? Because it increases the release of dopamine. The dopamine is your reward system. Why do you want to do things? Because you have the dopamine release. That's why you do it more and more and more and more and more. Sugar on the brain is very similar with the dopamine release as opioids, as cocaine, as heroin. This is why it's so hard to break that sugar habit. Whole foods, even fruits, even fruits, do not cause the same release as dopamine as sugar. This is why, this is why I always recommend for anybody who's going to go on a diet, who's going to go on a lifestyle change, you need to lateralize and find something that's going to create that high of a dopamine release to satisfy the brain. It's addiction 101 take away the bad activity, replace it with a good activity, but it has to be just as much for dopamine release, so your body is going to be able to compensate and adapt better. I'm not saying it's easier, it's just going to be better. Why? Because with dopamine, we get a tolerance, like everything else. You get a tolerance. So now you're going to need to get more and more and more for the same response, and this is where you get a food addiction. This is where you get increased uh, 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 tolerance for alcohol, stimulants, because of the dopamine release. Next is depression. So it, again, it hits the, the addiction side, which is dopamine. But also you get depressed, you get mood disorders. Not only because, I mean, yeah, they're getting bloodstream fluctuations, blood glucose. However, increased sugar, sugar consumption causes depression. Why? Because sugar affects what's called in the brain, the, the memory center, which is the hippocampus. And sugar diets, high sugar, what happens? It affects the hippocampus and the whole amygdala, the whole, that part of the brain, okay? And it decreases the cognitive function. Decreased cognitive function, decreased memory. It plugs up the memory bank. Also, you're gonna have mood disorders because you're gonna have a roller coaster of the, your blood glucose. You're gonna have high, then low, then high, then low. Okay, so this is where you get the mood disorder. You're going to get very moody. Why? Because of a sugar crash. Sugar suppresses the formation of what's called brain-derived neurotropic, neurotropic factor. The brain, again, the synapses, which prevents memory from occurring, cognitive function. Anytime you suppress the formation of the BDNFs, your brain's not going to work appropriately, all due to sugar. Now, the AMA recommends six teaspoons per day for males, I'm sorry, for females, and seven teaspoons for males. So one way, again, I always recommend to eliminate the sugar, you want to replace it with good nutritious foods, lean fats, I'm sorry, good dietary fats, lean proteins, and vegetables and fiber. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave any comments down below. I'll see you the next time. Thanks for watching.